What's up guys, welcome back, back with another mobility and flexibility video, something you can follow along to. We're gonna spend 30 seconds in each position. I'm gonna get this going straight away. I'm gonna set my clock and we're gonna go straight into hip flexor stretch, one foot forward, one foot back, squeeze the butt, lean forwards. I'm gonna put some kind of chill music on so you guys can just take some time for yourself. There is a good chance I may cramp during this. My friends were doing a 500 mile bike ride for charity for Adoption UK this weekend. I joined them on the last leg yesterday, which was 70 miles. And everything that comes along with cycling a long way and having a tiny saddle, that's how I feel right now. Anyway. Cool, and then we're gonna come out of that. We're gonna swap sides. 30 seconds done, nice and easy. What I want you to do here is squeeze the butt cheek that's behind. So come back a bit, squeeze the butt cheek, then lean forwards and you will feel it more on your hip flexor, high up on your hip and it kind of comes through to your back. Three seconds guys. From there, just gonna step forward with that front leg. And if we can, we're gonna reach down to the floor, stretching off the hamstrings this time. With all these positions, feel free to move around. Just pulling your toes towards your chest, get more calf activation, is that somewhere you're tight? Just have a feel for what feels good for you. I don't want this video to be too long. I want it to be just kind of, and you can swap sides, something that you guys can get stuck into. Um, and kind of help you out in your day-to-day -day life without feeling like you've got to commit a huge amount of time to it because we're all busy at the end of the day. Okay, five seconds, and then we're gonna sit in this next one for a minute. And what we're gonna do is come down to our butt, we're gonna open up our legs as far as we feel we can. And we're just gonna reach down in between. It's a seated straddle or straddle. Very good for the adductors and the groins and the hips. For those people that are looking to do splits or gymnastics work. And it's just a place where I find most people are very tight inside the hips, inside the groins. So nice deep breaths in, on your breaths out. Let your body just drop a little bit deeper into the stretch. And that's always the time the stretch becomes a little bit easier on your exhale. Okay, we're gonna bring ourselves back up. This time, we're gonna lean over to the side. One arm up, one leg down, and one hand down on the leg, sorry. You feel the stretch all the way down the side here, as well as probably still in your groin and this hamstring slightly more. So we'll have this one for another 10 seconds. Ten seconds, I'm just gonna move first to show you where we're going next. I'm just gonna sit here, bring one leg across, pull on the outside of this leg here for a little glute stretch on the outside of your butt here, your glute meads in particular. You can tell I've been doing a lot of jujitsu. When I locked that up there, all I thought about was, <laughs> was grips for jujitsu. If you know, you know. Good, swap sides. Ooh, 
this side is tight. Again, just focus on your breathing, guys. Just big breaths in and out. Plenty of breath through the nose as well. Okay, from there we're gonna mix it up slightly. We're gonna come into what is like a downward dog position like this. Take one foot over the back and let that heel drop to the floor. We're looking for a calf stretch here. Some people won't be able to get their foot to the floor, it just depends how tight you are. Those that can get your foot to the floor, you can start raising your butt up higher for more of a stretch. Three, two, one, and you swap your legs. Pop that one down, cross that one over. Fifteen seconds here, guys. Nice deep breath still. Five seconds. Okay, what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna drop this back leg down. I'm gonna take a nice big step forward with my right leg or left leg, it doesn't matter too much. Then I'm gonna lift that back leg, back leg off the floor and be in like a deep lunge, palms flat on the floor. A bit more of an active stretch this one because we're actively holding the position. So it will be a little bit tougher. But that's fine. Just keep holding this one for a little bit longer. Fifteen seconds, guys, and then we'll swap it. You can start to make the transition now. So, back knee down, swap the legs over, up. Again for a minute here. I didn't tell you it was a minute because it's a harder one. And from my experience, if you don't tell people sometimes that things are gonna be harder, it ends up being a lot easier. Again, focus on that breathing. Don't be afraid to move your positions around and see if anywhere feels better for you. Last 15 seconds, guys. And then we're going to go into another slightly longer stretch as well. For this, you can grab a pillow or a block if you need to. I'm gonna grab this guy right here. Okay, I'm gonna let my feet point out behind me like this. That alone for me is quite a bit of an intense stretch on the top of the feet. Um, if you wear high heel shoes and that more often, then it's probably not gonna be as uncomfortable for some. Um, so what we're gonna do from there is we're just gonna start to walk ourselves back. And if you feel that you can lay back, amazing. Some people are really good and they can lay straight on the floor. I can't. So this is why I'm gonna use this. as my kind of introduction just to let me get lower and lower and lower. that and I did a lot of cycling yesterday, so a lot of quads. That sucks. All right, I'm extremely uncomfortable. That's what we're gonna do in another 30 seconds. Uh. All right, five seconds, guys. You can start to walk yourself up in any way, shape, or form. Hopefully, more graceful than how I did it. Oh, and that's the bit that hurts. I'm gonna straighten my feet back out again. 
Just move this out of the way. Okay, so from there, we're gonna come into a pigeon stretch, one of my absolute favorite stretches. If you go from all fours like this, if you step one leg back to create some space, lift it up, bring the other one through, and just kind of do like a kickstand, just turn it in a little bit, and you'll get a stretch into your glutes and sometimes into the adductors for some people too. What I'm gonna try and do here is I'm thinking about allowing that butt cheek to drop to the floor while staying over the center line of my body. I don't wanna be leaning over like this, trying to stay over the center and drop into the stretch. So nice big deep breaths guys. We're 10 minutes into this. Again, it's not gonna to be too long today. We're gonna to stay under the 15 minute mark for this stretch routine. And we can swap sides. If you feel this gives you a lot of torque in your knee, if you bring your foot closer to your groin, often, often that will take some of the torque out. If you're out like at 90 degrees, there is obviously a bit more torque on that knee, but you'll get a bit more of a glute stretch also. Okie dokie, from there. We're gonna start with our feet up like this, or knees up like this, feet down, and we're gonna put our hands down and we're simply gonna drop our legs like this. So I've got a 90 degrees here, and I've got a 90 degrees here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap from one side to the other for a little hip opener. If you're feeling like your hips are a bit more flexible, hopefully mine are, you can take your hands away and you can just do this kind of rotations through like this. There is an added extra if you really want to, or you can come up and extend the hips at the end. But for the sake of this, and for the sake of my knees, we're just gonna hit a few rotations through here just to get those hips moving before we do frog stretch next. All right, guys, great job. All right, we're gonna go into frog stretch. Again, another one of my favorite stretches. Open the knees up, take the hands down. Now, for some people, this will feel like enough of a stretch as it is. I'm actually gonna show you from this side, it's gonna be better. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to send the hips back. So I'm like, I'm almost going to a deep squat here, a deep sumo squat. Then I'm gonna to start to get a good pull on my groins as well. Now what I like to do if possible is when I'm in this deep position where I can feel the stretch, I like to try, I'm just gonna tuck my toes underneath so I don't hurt my big toes, to walk myself up in that position and see if I can hold it. If I can, I'll come back down again, I'll open the legs up and I'll see if I can get a little bit deeper into it. It just helps me create a bit more of a stretch. You can come down to your forearms too, that is absolutely fine. Now we haven't spent too much time on the upper body today, so I'm just gonna do two that I need to do for me, but it's something that I find people struggle a lot with. And that's gonna be internal rotation, external rotation of the shoulders. So we're gonna do something that we call sleeper pose. All you do is lay on your side like this. You bring your arm out in front, in line with your shoulder, keeping that shoulder blade on the floor, okay? And then you just let this arm drop and you put a little bit of pressure on it to see how your internal rotation is. So what I'm trying not to do, I'm trying not to push his hand down so this shoulder raises off the floor. That's not what we wanna do. We keep the shoulder in contact with the floor. If it's here for you, that's absolutely fine. And we just control it down. Now this, you can do PNF here. We're not gonna do that today. Um, but PNF is basically proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. It's a really fancy way of just tricking the defense mechanisms of your muscles to allow you to stretch further. We have two mechanisms in our muscles, a little bit of nerdy stuff for you, muscle spindles and the Golgi tendon organ, and they either make muscles contract or release when they're under stretch. So by doing PNF, we trick them to allow us to go deeper into a stretch. And then we'll just swap sides. I'll spin around, you guys can face the other way if you want to. Again, arm out in front, shoulder flat on the floor, 
This will be a little bit tighter than the other one to start with most likely, because obviously we stretch the one for a longer period. So if I was to do PNF here, I would get to the point where I feel slightly uncomfortable, not hurting, but I can feel the stretch. I would place something on that, like my hand, and I would push my arm back up into this hand with about 50% of my power for six seconds. I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six. I would stop pushing, I'd take a big deep breath in, and then it would let me drop further into the stretch. And see how I got a little bit more range there. It's really, really important if you do this, especially if you do it with someone else, that you do not force that afterwards. You are always guided by the other person or your feelings. You don't want to be going to points of, oh, that feels like stretching too much. Just trying to explore new range. It's not aggressive. It's not aggressive. And relax. Well done, guys. Shake it off or have a little lie down and, you know, kind of bask in that kind of nice feeling you get after having a little stretch or a workout. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you liked and didn't like, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.